Welcome to Wit & Wire, where we share podcasting tips, tutorials, and resources to help new and experienced podcasters build their shows and make an impact. I'm your host, Melissa Guller, and in this episode, I'm sharing my top 10 podcasting predictions for 2021, including trends in content creation, marketing, monetization, and more. Before we dive into the trends, I'm excited to share our first listener shout out. This is one of many new ideas I'll be trying out in season two. If you're interested in getting your own shout out on air, leave us a review in Apple Podcasts for a chance to be featured. This week's shout out is to listener Katie Tomlin, who says, I'm thinking about starting my own podcast, and these episodes have all been so helpful in my research and planning ahead. Concise, informative, fun. Katie, concise, informative, and fun is exactly what I aim for, so a huge thank you for your kind words. You'll have to let me know on Instagram if you've decided to go for it. This is actually a very timely review, because if you are thinking about launching a podcast of your own, I'm running a brand new free challenge for 2021 called Ready to Record, where I'll share some of my students' favorite lessons for new podcasters, like choosing your microphone or making sure there's a real audience for your podcast or even brainstorming a ton of great episode ideas to get you started, and there's a bonus lesson on monetizing your podcast even with a tiny audience. You can check out all of the details at witandwire.com slash challenge, or find the link in the show notes. 2020 was absolutely a record year for new podcasts launched. To give you some stats, Listen Notes counted 809,000 new podcasts in 2020, while another company called My Podcast Reviews counted over a million new podcasts. So either way, it's confirmed to be a huge, huge number. And in 2021, I have a feeling that that will continue to rise and a new record will be set. But in case you're worried that you've missed the boat, that there are already too many podcasts out there, I want to share some reassuring data from a company called Single Grain. They did some research to show that last year in 2020, there were 500 million blogs, 31 million YouTube channels, and only 800,000 active podcasts. So although at first it sounds like there's a huge, huge number of podcasts, it's still such a new medium, and I just wanted to say that there's so much opportunity for you to get your podcast out there. And that's why I'm so excited to dive into these trends today. Trend number one is that Spotify will continue investing heavily in podcasting, both in technology and in content. In their own words, Spotify is trying to become the world's leading audio platform. They may have started out in music streaming, but they're clearly dreaming of a much bigger future. Over the last two years, they've been on an acquisition spree. So in 2019, Spotify acquired Gimlet, the production company that created Startup, among many other great podcasts. They also acquired storytelling production house Parcast, and they acquired the hosting platform Anchor, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with or maybe use for your own shows. In 2020, those acquisitions just kept coming. So they acquired The Ringer, which is Bill Simmons' digital brand. And they acquired Megaphone, which was a huge deal just in December of 2020. It's clear that they're going to continue investing heavily in podcasting, not just the tech, but also in companies that can help them create custom content. They infamously bought the rights to Joe Rogan's podcast in 2020. It's a Spotify exclusive. And they're also developing their own new shows. They're partnering with celebrities like Michelle and Barack Obama, And I think that this is a sign of the times, that Spotify and probably the other big platforms will all start to think more like Netflix, more like Hulu, and frankly more like Amazon and move into the world of content creation. They've also been doing a lot to launch their own proprietary technology for ads called SAI. And I don't know how well I see that getting adopted, especially not by indie podcasters like us, but it'll certainly be interesting to keep an eye on the way that Spotify continues to spend money on podcasting in 2021. Number two, Amazon will become a critical player for the first time. So last year, Amazon invited podcast hosts to submit their shows for the first time to both Amazon Music and to Audible. Then I think a few months later, they rolled out podcasts on Apple Music, although TBD what they do with Audible. I don't think they've done much yet. At first, this might not seem like a big deal, but there are two big reasons why I'm keeping a very close eye on Amazon. One is Alexa. 
She is everywhere, in every home it seems, and only continuing to grow as more people are purchasing Echo devices for their homes. So if Echoes become the preferred way to listen to podcasts, then Amazon will become key. But the second reason is just that Amazon is so freaking huge that we should always keep up with what they're doing. My guess is that they're going to start releasing their own original content, just as they've gone into original movies and TV series to compete with Hulu and Netflix. One more thing. On December 30th, 2020, Amazon confirmed their plan to acquire massive podcast firm Wondery, whose podcasts have a reputation for being adapted to screen. So if you're picking up what I'm putting down, adapting podcasts to screen. Long story short, I think Amazon wants to be everywhere, and they're very good at it. As a quick little action item, I will include a link in the show notes for you to submit your own podcast to be listed in Amazon. That brings us to trend number three. Apple will start having to make legitimate improvements to keep their market hold. Up until around 2018, I think Apple was kind of chillin'. They were by far the biggest listening app, and they didn't have to do that much to compete for attention. But now, people have more options, and Spotify in particular is taking away their listeners. So I'm really curious to see what will Apple do in response. This matters a ton to us hosts, because right now a lot of our success metrics are tied to Apple specifically. For example, when podcasters talk about hitting the charts, we're actually only looking at listeners in Apple. I'll be interested to see, does Spotify try to compete with their own charts? Will it be easier to chart there, which might attract more podcasters to try and drive their listeners to Spotify instead of Apple? I don't know, but it'll be interesting to see. The other huge thing that Apple basically dominates is reviews. It's not a game that I expect Spotify to play. You can't leave reviews on any albums, and I don't see why they would expand into reviews just for podcasts. But Stitcher and some of the longtime apps do have reviews, and they do currently matter to Apple's algorithm, although we don't know how much. But I think more than that, reviews function as social proof. So as long as Apple is still relevant, and I certainly don't see that changing this year, I think that getting reviews is still important because they show other listeners that people are enjoying your show. So I wouldn't change course if you're trying to get more reviews for your podcast. I still think it's a worthwhile strategy for 2021. Now that we've covered the major streaming platforms, I want to focus on a few trends that I'm interested to follow when it comes to actually creating podcast content, and then I'll get into trends for marketing and monetization. Up next is number four, episode quality and listener experience, or LX, will matter more than ever. Listeners are savvy. They're used to great shows. And that's why your content will need to be both valuable and well-produced in order to compete. This doesn't mean you need to spend a crazy amount of money. I don't need you to go into a private studio or buy a $500 microphone or anything like that. But spending a little bit of money on the right microphone and then spending your time on creating great episodes will make a huge difference. Even though this is number four on the list, I really think that having a great podcast with great episode quality that listeners love is the most important thing you could do in 2021 and is maybe the top takeaway I hope you take from this episode. At the same time, there's another trend I'm really excited about, and that's number five. More podcasters will explore creative formats, lengths, and even production styles. For example, I think shorter episodes are trending right now. That doesn't mean that every podcaster should shorten their episodes because hour-long episodes still very much work. It just means that I think we'll continue to see a wider range of options, with some people sticking to a 60-minute episode and others doing a 6-minute episode. Also, as technology becomes more accessible, I'm wondering if more podcasters will start to get creative. Narrative shows take a lot of time, a lot of money, and people, but maybe more podcasters will adapt kind of a narrative light approach with a little bit more scoring or a little bit more of a soundbite style. So I think that'll be interesting to watch. There are also some standard podcast formats that have worked since the dawn of time. Going solo, co-hosting, interviewing, narrative. You guys have heard me talk about these before. But I'm wondering if there's room for something new. I don't totally know what that'll look like, but overall, I think this will be a year for more creativity and experimentation when it comes to actually creating great episodes. I also have noticed that not all episodes in one podcast have to be the same. 
Historically, I think we associate the word podcast with a weekly episode, 45 minutes, same day of every week, kind of the same format. But I think a lot more people will start to get creative about maybe one episode a week is a certain format. Maybe there's a mini-sode on Friday. Maybe they'll start to repurpose some of this content into other channels. Maybe they'll start to involve listeners, which is something I know I'm really interested in. Overall, I just think that there's a lot of room for creativity that has yet to be unlocked. So I'm excited to see what hosts will start to do. That brings me to one of my favorite trends, which is number six. More hosts and businesses will create high quality, limited podcast series instead of continuous programming. This is something I've been wondering about for a while, because I think for a long time, everyone assumed that a podcast meant it had to continue into like infinity and beyond. But then I've noticed the podcast called We Crashed was a limited series, and that was wildly popular about the fall of WeWork. Then, looking a little bit beyond the world of podcasting, limited series in TV seem to also be gaining a ton of traction. So Hulu's series, Little Fires Everywhere, Netflix, The Queen's Gambit, and HBO Max's The Flight Attendant, all of which, by the way, are incredible. I've seen and recommend all three. What I love about these limited series is that it gives you the opportunity to really increase your production value. I think this could be the time to really go all in on a narrative format, although it doesn't have to be fictional or even chronological to work, but I could see businesses using limited series to attract new customers almost as cornerstone content. Because I don't think you have to do a weekly episode anymore in order to be relevant as a podcast. I think instead it'll be really interesting to see if people start to package limited series to hit the most important topics or to tell a story from start to finish and to see how that might impact the growth of their business, their mission, or their platform. I'm sure these next two marketing trends are some of the most interesting to some of you listeners. So let's go right ahead with number seven. SEO knowledge and implementation will become critical as search engines will start to adapt to a more podcast-driven world. For a long time, I have said that Google can't listen to podcasts, and as it turns out, now they can. In 2019, Google started including podcasts in Google search results, kind of similar to the way that they show YouTube videos right at the top. They, of course, only show podcast episodes from Google Podcasts. So as a quick aside, that's one of the many reasons why it's important to have your podcast in Google. Probably then, it was no surprise when in 2020, Google finally sunsetted podcasts in Google Play and started actually utilizing the long-promised Google Podcasts and a slightly improved new Google Podcasts manager for hosts. On top of that, I did recently learn that Google Podcasts is now transcribing podcasts automatically, which means that Google will be able to more easily crawl your episodes for keywords. This does not mean that Google will provide transcripts for you to use. For that, I still use and love Otter or Podscribe, and I'll include links in the show notes to both of those resources. However, I will say that both of these things indicate that essential SEO knowledge will be more critical for podcasters to think about for new episodes. I know that SEO tends to be a terrifyingly large topic that I'm excited to cover more in 2021 in a later episode or maybe even a workshop. But for now, a tangible takeaway is to start thinking about your episodes in terms of searchable keywords. And I'll also just add that having a website will be more important than ever. Websites is another topic I could probably do a whole episode on or maybe a month's worth of episodes. So if you have questions about podcast websites, maybe email me or send me a DM on Instagram and that'll give me some ideas for some future episodes. Up next is trend number eight. Video platforms will become increasingly important for podcasters, not just using them, but the implications of their impact on consumers, YouTube and TikTok in particular. First, I want to talk about YouTube. To go ahead and state the obvious, Google owns YouTube. Therefore, YouTube videos show up first in a lot of Google searches, which is a great way to get your content in front of more people. On top of that, YouTube alone is already a search engine. So the reason why I'm looking at YouTube as valuable is because although videos are not technically podcasts, they will put you in front of new people. And if your primary interest is getting in front of more people and potentially building up your platform or building up your business, then YouTube can be a great way to do that. 
I'd also say that an interesting element about YouTube in 2020 is that a lot more people are trying out live streaming as either an element of their podcast or just a component of their business. So I think it'll be interesting to see how live streaming continues to play into our growth strategies for 2021. The other huge name in video in 2020, of course, is TikTok. And TikTok is here to stay, no doubt about that. So frankly, our reels on Instagram video pins on Pinterest, and all of the other new video-driven social media features of 2020. Social media and marketing experts have been telling us about video for years. It is the future. It is the present, et cetera, et cetera. And specifically, I think what's interesting with TikTok is that they're so short and digestible. In an age of very bite-sized content, I think we might see some spillover into the way that people actually produce their podcasts. So maybe they start creating some of those microcasts, the five-minute episodes we talked about before. But I would say in a more obvious way, TikTok matters because that's where the people are. If you're interested in trying it out, a lot of my students have actually already found some early success building their audiences pretty quickly with TikTok, and there are no signs of slowdown. Overall, I would definitely not say TikTok is a requirement, but it is certainly a good idea for the right podcaster. So if you enjoy creating video or if you think that your people are on TikTok, it's well worth considering. As a quick recommendation, if you are thinking about trying video, I always like to start small. So I would say start with a platform that you're already on. Let's say you don't have a YouTube channel. I would start with a few reels on Instagram to announce your latest episodes. And then if you enjoy it and you feel like it's helping, consider trying YouTube or start with TikTok or just start with one that you're familiar with. Overall, I don't want you to feel like you have to try video at all, let alone all at once. It's a great idea, but it's one of many great ideas that you could focus on, and if you're anything like me, you can't try everything at once. So start small, or just tell yourself, maybe later. It's totally fine to say, not now, or not for me. That brings us to the final two trends, both of which are around podcast monetization. Number nine is that annual podcasting ad revenue will top one billion freaking dollars this year because ads still work and honestly, listeners don't seem to mind them. No matter where you look, studies just continue to show that listeners are receptive to podcast ads. Whether or not you personally find them annoying, they are far less intrusive and frequent than the number of ads we might fast forward through on TV and certainly significantly fewer ads on a podcast than on a traditional radio network. On top of all of that, listeners build up a lot of likability and trust with the hosts of their favorite shows, and often the ads included feel more like a recommendation from a friend. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're still clearly labeled and read as ads, but buyer behavior and preferences clearly indicate that ads are here to stay. For whatever reason, people respond well to podcast ads more so than ads really anywhere else, which is why both hosts and businesses love them. From a tech perspective, I also think 2021 will bring something called dynamic ad insertion into the conversation more frequently. With DAI, to kind of explain it at a high level, imagine swapping out ads from all of your February episodes after six months and doing it automatically. Maybe you have a new partnership and you can just swap out the old for the new. That's the essence of DAI. And that's where the word dynamic comes from, because you're able to dynamically swap out the ads. And based on a lot of the new features that came out last year from all of my favorite podcast hosting platforms, which you can find in the show notes, it's clear that they're all prioritizing this tech for 2021 and beyond. For me, though, there's another trend I'd like to talk about in the world of advertising. And that's our final trend, number 10. Many indie podcasters will experience a mindset shift around podcast monetization. Sponsorship will become one option, but not the option. There are now networks in 2021 that make it easier than ever for new podcasts to find sponsors, and I'll talk about a few of those in upcoming episodes of Witten Wire. However, I don't personally believe it's worth it unless you have enough ears on the ad. To me, one of the most important messages I'm excited to talk more about this year is to help podcasters with this mindset shift away from thinking about your podcast as a product and instead thinking about your podcast as a marketing channel. Here's what I mean. You can still use ads on your podcast and you can still talk about different things that your listeners can purchase, 
But instead of having a sponsor pay you a lump sum upfront to sponsor your podcast, think about promoting your own products, your own services, maybe a Patreon or a membership or a paid community or even products that you love as an affiliate. Instead, think about how your podcast can connect you with more people and how those growing relationships and them sharing the podcast with more people and your audience developing and you reaching a wider audience over time might result in you earning more money selling something that's yours. This episode covered a ton of ground, but that wraps our top 10 podcasting trends to watch in 2021. Don't worry, it's all written up in the show notes at witandwire.com slash 21. But before we go, I wanted to quickly reiterate something important I mentioned right at the start. I know it may feel like the podcasting industry is bigger than ever. And frankly, it totally is. But there is still room for you, I promise. And compared to those millions of YouTube channels and blogs out there, podcasting is just getting started. So if you are thinking about launching a podcast of your own, I think 2021 is an incredible time to get in on the ground floor, and I do hope you'll consider joining our free five-day challenge for new podcasters to see if your podcast idea has real growth potential, to brainstorm the perfect name to attract ideal listeners, and to finally get ready to start recording. Learn more and sign up for free at witandwire.com slash challenge. Thank you so much for joining me this week. To see the full list of trends and to find everything I referenced in today's packed episode, you can see the complete show notes at witandwire.com slash 21. That's the number 21. If you're enjoying the podcast, I hope you'll let me know. Reviews let Apple know that great listeners like you enjoy our show. Plus, I'll be choosing a few favorites for shout outs in upcoming episodes. So it's a fun way to hear your name and maybe your podcast name on our show. I'm Melissa Guller, and you've been listening to Wit and Wire. I'll see you next time, podcasters.